Hey everyone, this is Joanne coming to you live from New York. I'm also known as hashtag Unicorn Boss. So as you guys are jumping online tonight, go ahead and hit me up with some unicorn emojis since those are my jam. By the way, happy Unicorn Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, Unicorn Monday on my page today. If you're grabbing me live, go ahead and leave me a number one. And if you're catching me on the replay, go ahead and leave me a number two. So super excited tonight, you guys. We're going to be doing some keto cooking. This is a brand new recipe, and I couldn't resist. It sounded so very yummy and delicious. So how many of you guys love chili? If you love chili, go ahead and comment chili in the comments below. I've got a really great uh, recipe in store for you tonight. This is actually a casserole. So let me tell you the name of the dish real quick. It's called Cheesy Chili Spaghetti Squash Casserole. So I don't know about you guys, but I think that sounds bomb. So if you think it sounds really yummy and delicious, go ahead and give me some bomb emojis below so um, let me go ahead and say hi and see who we've got popping on here remember if you're grabbing me live go ahead and leave me a number one say hi let me know where you're coming in from if you're catching me on the replay go ahead and leave me a number two and if you're a brand new friend don't forget to comment new below so that way I can circle back around and say hi to you I've got a ton of brand new friends so if you're brand new to me welcome my name is Joanne I've been keto one year now I'm down 60 pounds and I just love what this lifestyle has done for me which brings me to the next step if you're keto don't forget to comment keto and let me know how long you've been on the journey I would love to give you a shout out feel free to share with me how much weight you've lost I just love cheering you guys on in your own personal story so let's see who we've got here and then we'll go ahead and get started with our cooking you guys by the way if you love my page and you have a lot of fun go ahead and give the video a quick share I so appreciate your love and support it really does help me out as we're getting going here and if you have a favorite keto group you you'd like to introduce me in and as long as it's uh, abiding by the group rules you can go ahead and share me there too and introduce me so hi Todd welcome hi Robin who else do we have here Rose um, Stephanie Shota <laughs> yeah I've got the Mario shirt on let's see who else Tammy Pam Stephanie Tammy Karen Lori awesome you guys so hi Andrew I haven't seen you in a while how have you been so super excited to uh, do this recipe with you guys it's my very first time I'm ever trying this one I think it sounds really yummy and delicious I think I forgot to put the macros on the recipe so when I get done I'll make sure I update that for you but in case you're curious uh, it's supposed to serve eight servings calories are 284 fat is 20 grams of fat so pretty decent on the fat scale I usually prefer it to be higher but this is still respectable protein is 23 grams and it is a little bit higher on the carb scale it's six grams of total carbs and that's because of the spaghetti squash but I eat most of my macros uh, my, my carb macros for my dinner so this is gonna be totally fine as long as you're budgeting your day you guys this will be perfect so I'm seeing all the chili comments so if you guys love chili comment chili this is a cheesy chili spaghetti squash casserole so I'm really excited to try this one so I've got some things going here what I did for my first step off camera was I pre um what's the word steamed my spaghetti squash in my microwave that's a neat little hack in case you didn't know it of course you could roast this in the oven cut it in half first spread some olive oil on it and then let it roast but I think this is just a nice neat little hack to save you some time I also think it's easier to cut your spaghetti squash once it's steamed I have a lot of difficulty cutting it when it's hard like that and then trying to roast it so this works really well for me so this is still really hot. I was able to get it cut. I just scooped out the middle. So once you've got these cut, in case you've never worked with spaghetti squash before, you would just uh, scoop out the middle, get all of, like the slimy middle bits out as well as your seeds. You could always roast these after, so I usually save these. Um, so, uh, and then once you've got that all scooped out, you've got your spaghetti squash. So there's so many different ways you could eat it. If you guys love spaghetti squash, feel free to comment and share with me some of your favorite ways. My favorite way actually, aside from this recipe, is when it's halved like this, if you break it up and put some sauce and some fresh mozzarella and just uh, put it in the oven, you get almost like a baked spaghetti dish. It's awesome. Hi, Linda. Hi, Sharon. Welcome. So, um, the first step is I've just got a nice big bowl here with two tablespoons of grass-fed butter. I'm going to go ahead and scoop the uh, spaghetti squash out. Hopefully this won't be a hot mess on camera, you guys. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Hi, Daisy, welcome. I'm going to scoop it out and get it in, uh, in here. Where's my fork? 
um, and get it nice and melted with all of the butter. So I don't know if you guys can see too well. Let me see if I can move this just a little bit. So um, if you, once the, the spaghetti squash is nice and steamed, um, it should just, see how nicely this just crumbles right off? So you can just scoop it out really nicely and it makes these little spaghetti-like strands. Um, so if you're low carb or if you're keto, um, this is just such a fun way to um, still enjoy spaghetti every once in a while. So I really love the taste of spaghetti squash. I think it's so, so yummy and delicious. So I'm just gonna get out as much of this as I can from each half. And then we're gonna go ahead and start to make our uh, chili portion of the recipe. So while I'm doing this, why don't you guys go ahead and uh, say hi and let me know how your Monday is going. I would love to hear about it. I probably should have scooped this off camera, but I figured, you know, when I was brand new, I didn't know how to do this and I didn't know the neat little trick about roasting it in the microwave. So I figured I would share it with you all real quickly. So. That's pretty good. I'm going to switch to the other side now. So what did everybody have for their keto dinner? I would love to hear about it. By the way, if you love spaghetti squash, I've done a few really great recipes on my page. You can go back and check them out. I made some pizza nests as well as um, some baked uh, spaghetti squash. And I also did a, a cheesy cauliflower um, spaghetti squash recipe that was really good. So... I like spaghetti squash, so there's quite a few of them on the on my website or on my page here. Okay, I've almost got this. Just bear with me another 30 seconds here. see that was really nice and easy you guys not a big deal and they come out into nice little spaghetti strands uh, Todd said he had pulled pork salad tonight Ooh, with blue cheese dressing that's awesome Daisy's gonna make keto friendly lasagna with cabbage that sounds spectacular yum so I'm just gonna stir this around and let the butter melt into the spaghetti squash um, the recipe said you should have about four cups of spaghetti squash, so I think that'll be fine with a, I don't know if this is quite four cups, um, but that's okay. I'm not looking to feed a ton of people, so you may need to do uh, two, uh, two spaghetti squashes and double the recipe if you have a very large family, but this should be enough. Oh my gosh, the butter smells so good in here. Actually, one of my favorite ways to do this as well is to drizzle it with some butter and a little bit of Parmesan, and you could just have it like that as well. It's really delicious. Okay, so next step is we're gonna just put some fresh cracked uh, salt and pepper on here. Let me just give this one more stir and then we'll get to the chili portion of the recipe. Okay, I'm gonna let that finish melting for just another moment here. We could actually begin to throw this in our casserole pan because we're gonna make some layers. Uh, Stephanie said she's making rosemary roasted chicken legs and salad. Oh, that sounds delicious, I love it. So let me see here. I think first step is So yeah, once this finishes melting, which I'm sure it's done by now, we can actually spread the squash out right in the uh, casserole dish. So while it's nice and hot and it hasn't gotten like hard, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now actually. So I've just got my casserole dish and I've got it greased so hopefully things won't stick. So let me go ahead and get the spaghetti squash in here while it's nice and easy to move around.
perfect. All right, let me just get a nice thin layer here. Once this is done, uh, once we're done cooking the rest of the uh, recipe, we're gonna put a layer of sour cream on top of the spaghetti squash, and then we're gonna layer it with our chili, and then put a bunch of cheese in there as well. So, sounds really delicious. I like quick and easy recipes, so if you guys are struggling on your keto journey and you're looking for a bunch of nice, quick and easy things, um, you should really enjoy everything I do on my page. Um, I had a busy, busy corporate job. I was working any anywhere from 40 to 60 hour work weeks. So quick and easy, five or six ingredients. That's kind of my jam. That's what works really well for me. So um, so yeah, so you, keto doesn't have to be hard. That's the whole reason why I do what I do here. Oh yeah, thanks for the uh, salt and pepper love. I actually got them on either QVC or HSN. I think they're Wolfgang Pucks. Let me see here, I always forget this. I should know by now, by now. yeah, Wolfgang Puck. So they're pretty cool. Makes cooking just a little bit more fun, right? <laughs> Okay, let me see what goes on top of the spaghetti squash. See if we can take that, take care of that now. So next up on the spaghetti squash, we're supposed to put three quarters of a cup of sh shredded cheese and then put sour cream over the cheese. So actually, I don't think I want the cheese to melt. So I'm just gonna move this to the side. We'll come back to it and we'll, we'll do everything all at once when, it's to, when we're ready to combine. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, get some olive oil in here and we'll start to do the chili portion of the recipe, which is the good part, right? <laughs> I just got a new olive oil. Let me just open it real quick. Okay. I usually prefer cooking with coconut oil. Um, but I ran out, so we're just gonna do the olive oil. Okay. So the recipe actually doesn't call for any uh, garlic, you guys, but I can't imagine chili without garlic, so I'm going to go ahead and throw in a clove once this gets hot. Um, because I think it would taste so delicious with a little bit of garlic in there. I know I always ask this when you guys are cooking with me, but I don't know, garlic or no garlic, I think we should totally do the garlic. I think it's going to need it. So, <laughs> yeah, I love cooking with, um, with gas ranges. Um, I know sometimes we're not always blessed to have that, but luckily my apartment has a, a gas stove, which is really nice to work with, so... garlic and give this a moment here to get fragrant in the oil yeah everybody says garlic see you guys you are my people you are my tribe <laughs> need to have some garlic in uh, dishes where I think especially if you're cooking with ground beef I was tempted to actually dice up some onion and put onion in here as well but I didn't want to I didn't want to stray too far from the recipe the original recipe so that way I could share the macros accurately with you guys but if you wanted to do like half of an onion um, and just do some really nice fine chop or nice dice on it, I think that would also be really nice in this recipe too. It's just gonna add a little bit more carbs. So what did everybody do this weekend? Did you have a nice weekend? Happy Monday. I know it's tough getting back to the work week for you all. I remember what that used to feel like before. Now I just cook for a living, but before when I had my corporate job, I used to dread Mondays. So I really know what that feels like. Hey, Leaf, welcome. So let me give this like another 30 seconds or so. I'm just starting to smell it, so I want it to get nice and fragrant before I add in my, my ground beef. Okay, there we go. I love garlic too. You know, it's so funny. As a kid, I hated garlic. 
I, I was, did not make my grandma proud when I was younger. I was one of those Italians that put butter on her spaghetti because I didn't like tomato sauce or garlic. I know. <laughs> Luckily, I've grown up a little bit since then. <laughs> hey, Ashley, welcome. Yeah, I think this is a really quick and easy recipe, you guys. I think you'll really enjoy it. So I've just got a pound of grass-fed beef uh, in here, and we're just going to brown it up real quick and begin to make a nice, quick, and easy base for the chili. Of course, you know, if you wanted to do a real authentic chili, I normally would do it in my slow cooker and let it let it cook all day long. Um, but this is gonna be a, a, just a fun little spin on it as we make it into a casserole. Didn't do too much, it was raining. <laughs> I know, it's been, uh, the weather's been uh, not so nice here in New York. It's been really, really cold, so. So while this is browning up, let me kind of go over the next few steps with you guys in case somebody can't stay to the very end. So we're gonna uh, brown our meat and then season it uh, with some salt and pepper and uh, uh, strain it from any of the fat that's in there. And then we're, we've got some added spices that we're gonna add in as well as some, as well as some salsa. So get yourself a, a nice, uh, keto friendly you can make your own of course if you wanted to but I just I had a pre bought salsa that I used um, try and find one without any added sugar or less than two grams of sugar if you have to have it but the one that I had I wish I had thought to, to share what the brand was um, but it's it's a it's a nice one it's just basically you know all organic spices and diced um, tomatoes um, with seasonings and all of that so that's what we're gonna use here can you use ground turkey? You most certainly could do that if that's what you prefer, but for keto, you really do want the high fat. The high fat macros are gonna help you lose uh, lose weight and burn fat. So I would encourage you, unless it's you know personal preference, I would definitely go for a high fat uh, ground beef. Oh, awesome, yes. So I'll be doing a live tasting later on my page tonight, you guys. Sorry, the past few times I've cooked, I've forgotten to post it until the next morning, but I'll set a reminder tonight so that way we can make sure. I always do a live taste test and then share with you guys what I think about it and any changes that I would tweak on the recipe. So I'll let you know for sure if I love it. But I cooked, a, I cooked all year last year for you guys and did a new recipe almost every time. I really only repeated one or two of my favorite recipes just to kind of shout them out to you all. So, so far I haven't had one that I didn't like, so I think this will be fine. The percentage of fat, I usually try and get 70 or 80. I can't remember what this one was specifically. Usually I just buy the highest fat that I can find. I know last time I did online shopping and all they had was the 90, which made me sad because I usually try not to buy it that lean. But, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. So just gotta make it quick and easy. Okay, so this is almost fully brown. I'm gonna give it like another minute and then we will strain it and we'll add back in our, we'll add back in all of our ingredients and let it simmer. So I'm actually gonna strain the beef now because we're gonna have to let it simmer anyway. And it's almost completely cooked. All right, just give me 30 seconds, I'll be right back. Okay, 
very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to add in the rest of my ingredients. So here's that salsa I was talking about. <laughs> Thanks, Todd, for the love, I appreciate it. Um, I believe this is a cup, but I will check the recipe in just a moment to share with you guys. going to turn the heat down a little bit okay let's see what we have, what else we've got going in here um, okay so we're just going to add the rest of our seasonings so it calls for a, tea, a teaspoon of ground cumin and coriander So I actually, I didn't realize I didn't have any coriander, so I'm just gonna do the cumin and call it a day. Um, I sure it would, I'm sure it would taste awesome with both of them. No problem, Steph, uh, Sharon, I'm glad that you liked the answer. Okay, so we've got our cumin, and then we're also gonna do half a teaspoon of garlic. teaspoon of dried oregano. Okay, let me just stir this around. So it actually looks like it's a little dry to me. I actually think we need to put a little bit more salsa for it to, to have a little bit of a gravy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit more. I don't wanna go crazy, you guys, but I'm not liking how dry it looks. a little bit better so I'm just gonna go ahead and let this simmer on low for a little bit you would normally let it simmer um, about 10 minutes or so I won't keep you guys that long but we can start to kind of assemble the rest of the casserole and then throw our meat on top right as it's ready yes it smells delicious you guys if only you guys had smell a vision you would love it okay so let me go ahead and make some space for the casserole Here is um, our spaghetti squash, it's already in here. And then we are going to, we're gonna layer our cheese on top of this, I believe, let's see here. Spread the, the squash out, sprinkle three quarters of a cup of shredded cheddar, and then we're gonna set, do sour cream over top of that, and then finally add our chili on top. So I've got um, the total cheddar is one and three quarters of a cup. So I'm gonna do like half of this now and then we'll save the rest of it for the top of the, uh, the casserole. Yeah, I am definitely the Pinterest kit test kitchen here. All of my recipes came from Pinterest. That's why I always try to give kudos to the original author. Um, I wish I was as talented to come up with my own, but um, yeah. So I like Pinterest because you can literally filter for the exact ingredients you have. So for instance, when I was looking for this recipe, I, I put into the search uh, bar keto ground beef recipes because I knew I had some thawed ground beef and that was perfect. I had some choices pop up. Now, because I've been doing this a year, I'm having a hard time finding new ones that I haven't made already. So, so yeah.
There we go. So let's go ahead and spread our uh, sour cream on top. Forget how much this is. I think it was three quarters of a cup. Three quarters of a cup of sour cream. So I'm just gonna stir this around a little bit just so it's nice and creamy and a little easy to spread. I don't know how easy this is gonna spread you guys, but we'll try. I think it's gonna get all mixed in with the cheddar, but who cares? Who cares, you only live once. So I think we actually might need a little bit more sour cream. I don't think this is quite enough, but that's okay. <laughs> Hi, Jody. thanks for jumping on. I'm glad that you enjoyed my feed. Um, it really means a lot to me. When I first started cooking, you guys, I mean, I still am a hot mess in the kitchen, but I used to be really worse. So <laughs> this has been a lot of fun learning and growing with you guys over the past year. So next time I do this, I think honestly it would be easier to mix the cheddar in with your sour cream and have it like all one consistency and then spread it. Um, I think that would, that would be a better option for you guys. So when we get done with the, the, the video here, I'll try and update the recipe instructions so that way it has that step. Because this doesn't spread so well when you pour sour cream on top of the on top of the cheese. I kind of wondered about that when I first read it, but you know, I'd like to try and trust the author and, and, and do it the way that they say, so. too bad it was a little rough but got it mostly spread around there <laughs> all right just stirring my meat because I think that is the next step So next step is to spoon on the chili, spread it out. Um, actually, the original uh, recipe showed this being made in a pie dish, and you are supposed to leave like a half inch crust of just um, spaghetti squash. So that way it's almost like a pie. So you have your crust of spaghetti squash, and then your center with your sour cream, your cheese, and your chili. So when you make this, just be aware. Um, I'll show what her photo looked like, so that way you guys have it for reference. Um, obviously, I didn't have a pie dish, so I'm just making it all, all one thing in here. Okay. Let me go ahead and add in our chili, and then we're going to top it with cheese, you guys, and that is it. So really easy, definitely not a hard one to do. Can't use that, that's really hot. You guys see okay? Yeah, a little bit. You could add jalapenos if you wanted to. I actually think it's on the recipe and I didn't have any. It said uh, you could do chipotle uh, or jalapenos uh, and they were listed as an optional ingredient. So for sure, if you like it spicy, go ahead and add in some jalapenos. You could even put some slices right on top. I think that would look super pretty too. I'm not a big uh, jalapeno person, so I opted to leave it out. this out a little bit and then we're gonna add our cheddar and then we're gonna go ahead and bake it so 
So what do you guys think so far with all of our layers? So we've got our spaghetti squash on the bottom, we've got some cheddar on top, then we've got our sour cream, we're putting our chili on top, and now we're gonna top it with some more cheddar. And I think black olives would be amazing. So I do have some olives, so when I slice mine up, I'll probably definitely add some a few olives. You could do a dollop of uh, sour cream. I've got some avocado over here, so there's definitely a ton of different ways you could top it. If you had some fresh, fresh cilantro or some kind of herb, I think that would be amazing as well. Perfect. So there we go, you guys. It uh, smells amazing. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. If you guys make it, make sure you take a photo, tag me in it. I would love to hear about it. Ooh, green onions on the top. I'm loving all the ideas. Continue to comment and share. Um, so we're going to bake this in a 350 degree oven. Let me see for how long. About 30 minutes or, or until it's heated through. And it suggests to top it with cilantro, sour cream, salsa, guacamole, and avocado. So sounds bomb to me. I hope you guys uh, really enjoyed the recipe. If you had fun tonight and you want to try this one, make sure you go ahead and give the video a quick share. I so appreciate your love and support. By the way, if you'd like to be added to my secret recipe group, go ahead and comment group below and I'll get you added. And what else? If we're not connected yet, don't forget to go ahead and friend me and follow me. I appreciate you guys. Have a great night. I'll be back to chat with you again soon. Take care.